first year, Kilmartin Museum hosted an archaeological symposium where key speakers were invited to, to deliver a series of short, focused talks which were then discussed by a wide audience. Funding from Scarf and the Society of Antiquarians of Scotland has meant that Kilmartin Museum has started a process of turning the symposium conclusions into a more formal research training work for Argyle. It has to be comp comprehensive as possible, and we need to try and get views and ideas for as many people as possible. Um, it's meant to be organic and develop over time with additional information. Um, it'll take time, we'll probably never be perfect, but whatever we are trying to do um, to get our collective knowledge and understanding needs to be in one place. The draft is currently being worked on and will be, able, will be available for consultation by the end of October. We very much welcome your views and comments on it. Please contact your hand work with me over there later. One. Hello everyone, this is me. You've all brought great heritage projects to, to this conference with immense historic value, but for the most part, the economic and social value remains locked up. The Scottish Government have recognised that. They've awarded our girls something called a place partnership. The place partnership will be delivered by the Culture, Heritage and Arts Assembly. The, the, the purpose of which is to unlock the potential by a number of projects to map the sector, to uh, build the capacity of the sector, to create a world-class back brand, a, a web platform for internal communication and external marketing, and collaborative events, collaborative projects that bring together the sector. Because of the regional diversity, we're broken up into hubs. If this is of interest to you, you'd like a wee bit more information, I've put a sign-up sheet Seven, in the bar there six. with a few of my business cards. Please put your name on that and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Fastened that it means, it means fashionable, which is what the many fine fan chiefs and their ladies were as they travelled to Edinburgh in 1822 to welcome George IV. Mm -hmm. um, the Medugals and Denali were right up there um, with these Spanish fashionistas, and we have a fantastic collection of hand costume and Denali which um, evidences this, and we're very excited about it, and also the influence that our national. Our nat National Heritage has a worldwide style, um, and where we sit and see it still in the cities across the world. All year at Denali, the team, including 20, over 20 volunteers, work with the Clan Collection and the wonderful 20th Century Google Social History Collection to find out more about the people, influences, crafts, industries uh, behind the enduring legacy of our heritage textiles. Um, Fast and 10 October is our excuse to celebrate and share this with all of you and anybody in the community who's interested in textiles and fashion and heritage. Please come along and take us do I go? I go. Yes, go. There, there is a tune actually composed by uh, two Germans. It's called Highland Cathedral. But I want to tell you about a real cathedral about two miles from here, the Glen Cruden Cathedral of Trees. It was laid out about a hundred years ago, but sadly fallen into some repair just now. But uh, there is charities being formed to uh, repair it, restore it, and open it up for the community. It was created originally as a monument, a war memorial to the First World War, and then was later a burial ground for the Mackay family. But it holds another important purpose, and that is as a sacred space uh, where you can feel the spiritual presence of nature, hear the, the music of the bird song, the changing seasons, and the rustling of the leaves. And it's a place where you can take a prayer, a poem, a hope, a memory, or maybe use it for a special event. And remember that it is oh. our Glen Trippenhagen <laughs> Um I don't have a slide because I only decided in the pub I was going to talk about this last night. Um, if you go back and Google uh, Burnaby Historical Society, we're a tiny little historical society on the beautiful island of Burnaby in the Sound of Harris. Uh, we run a teeny toty museum and uh, we'd love everybody to come and visit it and maybe give a wee donation to our museum if possible. I can heartily recommend the beautiful Burnley beaches as well as our historical society, which are the finest beaches in the land and were featured in the Thai tourist board's brochures as being actually in Thailand when they weren't. They were on the beautiful island of Burnley. So please, please. 
come to the beautiful island of Bernadette in the sound of Harris, Kulis Naherich, come to our beautiful museum and possibly maybe put a pound in our pot. Kiev me the time you could do yet. Happy. I'm early. Finished. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you can be loud enough. Okay, so um, I'm from the Council for British Archaeology, and some of you, not all of you, because I did manage to get to every single card pack, will have found these cards in your um, folders this morning. Now, what these are is um, a pledge card that we've designed for you to send to your local representatives, your MP, your MSP, your local councillors. On the back, you can find a space to put their address, a little message that tells them why archaeology matters, and ask them formally or informally, to sign up to this pledge. Three pledges, very simple. I will value the heritage that makes my local area special. I will speak up for fair archaeological protections in the planning system. And I will champion the role of government to celebrate and encourage the appreciation of archaeology and heritage across the UK. Very simple, pretty uncontentious. Ask your representatives to send them in. And in 10 seconds, you can do loads of things with these. Add the pictures of your events, the things that you do that make your um, that make you value archaeology. Make it so that your representative values it too. And if you want some cards, can you... Off we go. Right, this was really just came up from listening to people this morning and talking about statues and women and all sorts of things. And I feel that there's there are a lot of fantastic women in urban that should be recognised, and one of them, I think we should have a candidate for a new statue. So this isn't happening, this is a project that could happen. And this is Amy McDougall, who was born in Soroba, and she changed the law on women's abuse and women's, um, women's exploitation. She was the first Metropolitan uh, Commissioner for Women for the Metropolitan Police in London. And she uh, was connected to the McDougalls of Denali, and she was an urban woman, so that connects with the stories that Rockfield's starting to build up. And she was part of Scottish Women's History, but connected to earlier speakers. And she could be perhaps a fantastic first statue for urban, any open born, changing law, and making a massive dis difference to both the whole of the UK, in fact. And that is the end of my time. <laughs> Don't have to. Okay. Mm. Off you go. Right. Um, our girl, when we moved here some 15 years ago, we found it was about 100 miles west east, 100 miles north south, at least half of that covered in water and small islands. And so the history group, which I became a member of on Lean, Lean History Group, as another of these geologists and geomorphologists that has to learn history because that's what there is there. And um, we found that we needed premises. So one year ago, we opened up the Argyle Atlantic Island Centre on the Isle of Ling. Please come and see it. It showcases all the Argyle Islands downstairs and the Ling History Group upstairs. Is there anything else I need to say? No, but we were in this building yesterday when the centre won the Argyle and Butte TSI Third Sector Interface. Social Enterprise of the Year organisation. Um, the Ling History Group is just starting uh, to plan a community archaeology survey um, with Claire Ellis here and help from ACFA. Um, we're going to start at the north end of the island with luck with some funding. Um, it's packed full of fantastic sites, some of which are known, two forts, Valley Castle and Leckermore Forts. Valley Castle, we know, has five hut circles below it, not recorded yet. Um, of course, we also have the slate quarries, but between those two periods, there's a lot of um, rural settlement, um, some of which we know dates from the 18th and 19th century, we can see that on the ground on the estate maps. Quite a lot, you trip over platforms and circles and barrel shaped things which we have no idea what date they are but hopefully the survey will, will tell us and we're going to work with the primary school and some of the older people to get them out on the sites as well we want to drone and a quad bike please <laughs> <laughs> and I'm somewhat of an inter interval perfect because I'm not on a rail project I grew up on a rail so I feel like I can be here uh, the Clyde Cave and Valley Landscape Partnership is a part heritage lottery funded programme running in Clyde Haven Valley, and we're bookended by Shetland Country Park down to New Lanark World Heritage Site. 
We're delivering over 70 projects between um, starting in 2012 to 2018, everything from reviving the Clyde Valley Orchards through to community archaeology projects, woodland projects, access projects and education projects. But if you're thinking um, of um, doing more with community engagement and natural history and conservation, I'd really encourage you to look at this funding source. Fantastic way to combine community engagement with rural regeneration, whole host of projects, whole host of community engagement and really good volunteer engagement as well. Our volunteers have picked apples, pressed apples, researched, recorded, built tree enclosures, planted trees, um, everything and anything, and it's created an enormous sense of energy in the area.